Thank you, thank you. I sure appreciate your fanfare. Um, okay, so all right, I, um, five o'clock. Um, I just want to go over like some of the, my objectives. Um, my objectives. So I'm going to talk about automating your job search, and let me give you some background. So I attended V School last year. Actually, this, I graduated in January. Um, so, I'm just a little bit of, I'm only like a few months ahead of you guys, right? Um, and when I was a student, I found what I thought was a really cool, I found really cool resources that nobody told me about. Or I just found ways to apply for jobs. Um, so I want to tell you about that, I want to tell you about like how I got a job. I want to show you the tools that I used to get a job. And how, and then I'm gonna take it on how I got it because everybody, I found it helpful when people told me their story. But also, I really think that there are some like general things that you can do that I that really that I, that I really benefited from. It's not like here was my approach, but um, okay. So I started looking for a job way too early. Like it was kind of dumb. But I, I I started I started in October, and I had like my first interview at like early no early November. And, um, it was, and I'm actually really glad I did it. And like, I, I initially started doing it for the sole reason of learning how, I was like, I'm just trying to learn how to interview because it was kind of scary. Um, so I started applying for jobs and I was getting interviews. <coughs> and we'll talk about how I was getting interviews. So when I was in class, I was averaging I think the lowest I had a week, once I started applying for jobs, I had I had one interview one week. And one week I had like five. But so I'd say like I had between like two to six interviews a week. Two to five was the average, right? Um, I always had interviews. Um, which is pretty cool, right? I mean I was in class and I was getting job interviews. And it wasn't like a, like they were people were taking me seriously as a developer, right? Um, and here's what I got from it. Like, did I get those jobs? No, I did not get those jobs. But here's what I learned. Um, I learned actually, I'll show you. Here, what, I, what I gained was I learned how to talk to interview, interview, interviewing people, interviewers, um, which was, you can't, you can't. You only learn it by doing it. And like, did I look like an idiot? A few times, but usually it was like, you know, it was, if, if I was just, way it was, if it was over my head, I was honest with them. And that's one thing I'll, I'll give you like tidbits that I actually learned, but largely like I learned how to talk. Um, and and eventually I started asking them for feedback. And, I, and I'll tell you, I, I'll give you those little tidbits in a minute. So, but here's here's what I found is really cool. Um, I started applying, how many times, who hates applying for, job, for jobs? Because what do you have to do? Fill out your at your address for the past ten years. Give three to five years minimum background, you know, employment. Like I was here this month, and I get to fill out the same crap over and over, and it kills you. It sucks. And there are some. So here's what: some places still do that. Like I applied for a job with ABM, IBM. Actually, I'm still kind of in the process. I haven't submitted it yet. I haven't submitted it because I have to fill out so much crap, right? But that's cool. IBM, I respect IBM enough. I'll do that because like if I, if I don't even have a shot, I have to, like big companies like will, will require their own process. But most companies, they have a, they are they sign up for these programs that really allow you to automate your job process program. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to apply for okay. This this on my watch it is 508. I am going to start telling you about a few websites that you can use to, put, to find jobs, get jobs sent to you, and apply for them. And I'm, I think, let's say in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna allow myself a little more time to apply for seven jobs. Okay, I'm gonna apply for seven jobs, like legitimately right now. Um, I'm, a con I'm, a, I'm a contract developer, so like I work, I'm not in a full employee. Actually, none of our development team is a full employee. Like every employee, 
all of our developers work as contractors for my company. And I'm approaching the deadline. I'm starting to look for jobs. I'm just kind of, I haven't really been applying. But why not? So let's apply for jobs. So here's what I learned. There are some really fantastic websites. I'm gonna log out of this. I'm gonna sign, sign them out. So I think I should still be logged in. Um, look, I got comments on the pull request. Um, so there's a few that are great. There's Indeed is now the single largest like online job database. There's also, you probably also heard of monster.com. Monster.com is cool. There's beyond.com. Beyond, I don't really like as much. They're, <coughs> I am not gonna use Beyond. They do a lot of the same stuff. I just found, I never got anything from Beyond that was either, I applied for a few jobs, but I think indeed, so you should know about it. There is beyond.com. And there's another one, dice.com. If you, if you don't know what know about Dice, Dice is a cool job board because it is only uh, technology oriented. Like it's only tech jobs. Um, I could probably find like a secretary job on Indeed, <coughs> but like you won't find, this is only tech stuff. Um, I think, yeah, tech careers. So, and here, so let's, what, what's really cool about Indeed, oh, I need to get my, my resume. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna download my resume real quick so I can apply for jobs. So I'm, I'm just gonna assume that we all know you should put work into your resume. Um, Okay, so here's what's really cool about Indeed and Monster and Dice. Um, I have to actually log in. Is you can sign up, you can do job searches, and then they will have, they will send, they'll update you daily on those job searches. You can save them, and they'll send you all of the new jobs that meet those whatever parameters you give it. So I, th I have to remember my password. I mean, this is actually, we could really be doing this in like five minutes. I'm just kind of dragging it out. Um, so let's say there's, there's a, f so let's talk about f creating a, a good job search. I probably don't want to look for, like obviously don't look for like stuff that is just not relevant. Um, so when I was searching, I looked for, I did a lot of, I did junior JavaScript. Um, I would also, when I would get notifications, a lot of times they would say like, senior de developer, and say like, tutor junior devs. So um, you have to kind of just filter out the ones that say like, because if there's junior in there anywhere, you'll get it. So I'll say junior JavaScript, and I'll sometimes I'd say like junior JavaScript Angular, or I'd say, you know, just junior Angular, and I'd get all these things. So like, look here, here's a junior front end developer in American Fork, Provo, Provo. And so I can say like how far, what's the distance, it's 250. Um, and so I live, I live down, I live in the south, so I'm gonna say Payson. And I'm not gonna say, I just wanna do JavaScript because I just wanna be general. So Payson, Utah, within 10 miles. I'm probably, probably not gonna find much. Qualtrics, you know these. Um, actually, you know what, I'm from Atlanta. I'm, I'd love to move back to Atlanta. So let's say, What's that? Atlanta, yeah, Atlanta, Utah. That's, that's, that's where I'm from. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. So, I'm so I'm like, I can apply for these jobs. And here's what you see. Um, you can save your resume. You can say, apply with your Indeed resume. And like, this is really easy. So let's say I want to apply for UI developer. Let's just find one that's relatively, let's say junior developer. Um, so I'll say, Kind of find this like junior Java, front end development. And let's see if it's easy to apply. It's better when they come to my email. I'm trying to find. So like get email updates for 
latest junior Angular jobs. Let's just get rid of, I'm just going to do one of the JavaScripts. Web software developer. Um, click on it to see if it's easy to apply. Okay, they're going to want me to do their own thing. I'm taking my time trying to find a good one because I actually want to apply for that. Okay, junior software developer, whatever. I'll just apply for it. And what it allows me to do is apply now. And I can just, so here's what I do. I, <coughs> I'll just attach my resume. And I wrote a pretty generic, simple cover letter. It's pretty, like, it's pretty generic, which is both good and bad. If it's something I really am really interested in, then maybe I'll like, I will change it a good bit, you know? I'll rewrite it if it's, if it's something that I'm, I care more about. But here I'm looking at for a junior software developer. So I'll say, I'm interested in your junior, and I'll just type one software developer position. And, am I Atlanta? No, yes, no. And look, I probably won't, I probably, they won't even look at me because probably, probably not, but I just applied. And it's that easy. So here's what's cool, right? So I'm gonna go back to this, and I'm gonna say JavaScript jobs. And I'm gonna say, get jobs for this search by email. And now, I, I deleted everything. So, and then I get, I get a little email saying, I applied. Um, and I created a, I have any, I cleaned it out. But I had like 400 emails, and each email had like anywhere from five to 40 jobs in each email. And every day I just spend like 10 to 10 minutes to half an hour just scrolling through my email. It's like, okay, and like, what's cool, let's see if we can, let's say, uh, I'm gonna do the easy apply. And this is what you, it looks like when you, when you get it from Indeed. So Indeed, let's so here we go. 30 remote, so I did a new one called for remote developers. I'm currently working remotely. So I said, okay, and here's what I look for. Easy apply. If, it, if, I, if it's easy apply, I'll apply for it just because maybe maybe I want it. So front end web developer designer. Willis, Williston, and I, here I'm gonna see like, I'll pop it open. I'll make sure that it doesn't say like, not remote. Remote, we are not considering contractors or remote. So that one's not legit. Um, some of these see like, some of these are just looking for uh, <coughs> I was gonna apply for one just for the heck of it. So I just look for these easy apply ones. Front end developer. Oh look, remote, easy. So I'm gonna say easy apply. And I'll say front end developer. This is probably gonna make it all bold. I'll just type it out. I wanna use the resume that I that I just downloaded. So look, I just applied for two jobs. Boom. Um, so I can keep going, right? But here, here, here's something that I did that I, someone gave me this advice, and if you're dedicated to being in Utah, then good for you. Like there are a good number of, there are lots of jobs here in Utah. Um, I'm not from Utah. I have come to like it here. But I am, I am personally in no way committed to Utah. Like, I don't, I, my wife is from here, she wants to stay here, I don't care. Like, I love other parts of the country. I love green, wet places. You know, I love Louisiana and Georgia, but you know, whatever. So I applied for jobs in almost every state from, from Washington to Florida, Maine, I, to Arizona. I avoided California in general. That's because of just personal bias, right? That's my, my bias. So, and I lived in Hawaii and Alaska, basically I said like, where would I possibly want to work? And I had, I went and I created searches for every, every metro area that I would want to work in. And I would put, I would say like, you know, within this radius. So I applied for like, and at one point, and so I had like tons of interviews in North Carolina. Like literally, I interviewed, had tons of interviews. My, my course was 16 weeks. So I had, 12 weeks of having several interviews, multiple interviews a week, right? So anyway, the point is, um, 
Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this. Pros, I applied in mass. Because, because this is so, no one showed this to me, and now you know. And I hope that you take advantage of it and apply the crap out of it, because it definitely helped me personally. Um, I feel like um, I, I learned a lot from doing it, and I got, had a lot of interviews. Um, and I got, and it's great to see those, those jobs just pouring in, saying like Angular, JavaScript. They are so in demand. Um, so good, I hope you, you apply the crap out of it. Um, but also, I am, now this is, this is Tanner talking, and this is not like generic good advice. This is like, I think it's personally good to be willing to travel for jobs. Like, a lot of people would not consider you if you're not local, and that's totally cool and fine. But I would say in my, in, in my basic cover letter that I pasted into everything, I'd say I currently live in Utah, but I am willing to commute, or willing to <coughs> relocate. Um, and the way I have my previous letter, um, I just and in my cover letter, I said, like, here's what I did before, here's what I'm doing now, and I, I'm working around code, but I want to code full time, blah, blah, blah. And I'm willing to, I'm willing to move if I, for the opportunity to become better. I am, I am a coder. I want to become a better coder. That was my approach, right? Um, and so anyway, I got lots of jobs. I got lots of interviews. But here's, here's something that's interesting. Um, did I get any of those, most of those jobs? No, I did not. You know what, you know what I did? That when I, you know what I did when I got my job? Was I, I, I sent out Soraya and I said like, I said, Soraya, I am interviewing like crazy, way more than, I think like one, people in my cohort maybe had, I think one other person might have had an interview, maybe? I can't, did anybody else have interviews in my cohort that they told you about? And I was interviewing like crazy, right? And we all got jobs about the same time. But what I did different when I got my job was I came to Soraya. I said, Soraya, here's what I'm doing. What can I do different? And I did what she told me, and I got the next job. Um, so like I listened to, I took advice from other people, and I, I think that's the biggest thing was we're all intelligent people. Like we were, you can't come to the school and succeed if you're not a fairly intelligent person. But we're dumber if we don't take feedback from others. So listen to Soraya, like I have experienced that listen, doing what vSchool tells you to do definitely helps. I did, so I can back up on this, I did every single thing vSchool told me to do. And when I paid closer attention, I got a job. So um, anyway, really I could have showed you how to like automate the, and just apply online really fast. I probably take five minutes, right? And I'll do like another one just for the heck of it. Let's apply for another remote job. Just see how easy it is. So easy. Um, let's just see if we just find remote, remote, remote. Front end JavaScript. Did I apply for this one? Oh yeah, that's the same one. No. Lehigh, Utah. I don't know this, what the requirements are. SQL, XML, C++, nope. Medical marijuana industry. I don't care what it is. I don't apply it. Just because, just so I can say, tell but people. California. I don't care. Like I'm not. I, if they if they ever contact me, I'm never gonna talk to them. <laughs> um, let me get my let me get my basic message again. And look look what I did. Because I actually want to use this in the, f in the future for things that I am serious about. I emailed Soraya and said, Hey Soraya, proofread this for me because I wanted other people to look at it. So I said, let's do this, full stack code developer. This is probably gonna be bolded when I paste it in here. Will it be? Sweet. Um, <laughs> and I'm just gonna, uh, I don't, I personally like to put it in the PDF. I don't really like to use their Indeed. Indeed kind of makes you use their template which, whatever, that's good and bad. So, boom, no, yes, no. <laughs> anyway, I just think it's funny. Um, just because it's, whatever. Um, so that's cool, right? And here's, like, I personally, you, I personally think applying for lots of jobs and talking to, you get, phone interviews are not terribly hard to get because 
you guys are at the same level or more advanced than I was when I was having my first interviews. And uh, so that's cool. Um, so I will, I will now tell you some of the things that I learned about how to interview. Um, I so here's a few things I learned. Um, be honest. Don't try to fake it. Um, a lot of people told me that, and it's true. Um, one, actually, my first interview where I was like, I told him I was like, listen, I'm really low. I'm I'm super junior, but I am eager. And he's like, and we had this long conversation, like, and there's a few keywords. And this is this. Don't just say this because it sounds good. Say it because you mean it. I, 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 I would tell people, it's like, I can, I've got to a point with JavaScript where I can do most any logic I want. Like I can do pretty much, I know I can figure out anything I need to figure out. But usually when I solve problems or I create features in, in apps, like I have to refactor it two or three times before I get it to where I think it's okay. And then somebody else will fix it even more. And I was like, and I would say like, I want to get to the point where I can write, and I would use these words, I would drop these hot words a lot, and I got, and it was good. It's like, I want to learn, I want to improve, and write clean, readable, efficient, and reliable code. Like, I want my code to be clean, readable, efficient, and, you know, it's like, and uh, there's another word I do in there, but like, and I would like, and he's like, that's true, I'm not just blowing hot air, like I want to, I personally want to be a good developer. Like, I am, I learn stuff every day, and, and people appreciated that, they're like, now I tell them I'm not very good, but I'm eager to learn. I was successful in my previous industry, but I, I want to be, the, I, this is the way I want to go, blah, blah, blah. So, and if I didn't know stuff, I didn't try to fake it. And multiple interviewers told me like, yeah, I talked to this one guy, he didn't know, he just like, he was, he just blew hot air or whatever. Like he tried to pretend and talked his way around it. And like, I mean, if you, th if you think you know, you know, do your best. Like, I just had an interview the other day where he's like, what's a closure? I'm like, oh wait, a closure. It's something kind of like this. I did my best, he's like, yeah, you got to just, and then he's like, this is what it is. Where's Jack, by the way? He's a kid. What's that? Oh, uh, bummer, that's nice. Um, anyway, so that was one thing that I, like, I would just say like, just be honest, be yourself. And uh, I, had a, I had an interview, so I have, through some connections, I had an interview with a, um, a very small, but six, very, they're doing great, successful uh, software company in Lehigh, um, or, or in the Lehigh area. Um, really small, and they're growing, and they've got lots of good clients, but they're, they're, they're maintaining quality by being small. Anyway, I got this interview with them just by association, through associations, and it was a terrible interview, terrible. Like, I can tell you why, but I'm going to go it. It's a whole other story. And now that you guys know Angular, you'd be like, oh, that was a harsh interview. But I don't love to tell you because I'm so bitter. But um, anyway, at the end, like, he, the guy just made me feel like a complete idiot. Um, even though he was, I'm not kidding, he was a really nice guy, but he still made me feel like a fool. Um, he told me like six times, no, that's wrong in the interview. Anyway. Like I said, not that, not that. Anyway, at the end I was like, okay, listen, like I've been interviewing that crazy. Like, what feedback can you give me? And like, so like, he's like, well, I just had a guy interview and like he knew the answers that I wanted. I'm like, okay, well that's great. Like he like that's a different issue. Um, but he's like, but you didn't really seem to know the answers. I'm like, but I told you. He's like, yeah, but like I would ask you like how would you do this? And like I would. Here's how I had learned to talk. I thought people liked this. I'd be like, like if I was going to make an HTTP request and get that data back, what would you? I'd be like, well, I would have, I would abstract my information to some service, and from there I would use like dollar sign HTTP, and I would, you know, use whatever URL parameters, and then I would return. I would make sure that that user like returns like a promise or something. Like, my point is, I thought I would talk like philosophically, like like I was really considering because I would really consider every little point, I could return the promise, and then I would use dot then to return that promise, and then I'd pass that function into the controller, and the controller return that promise and assign it to my scope, whatever. But I would take it, anyway. And he's like, okay, well you answered that question. He's like, but if there's only like one way to do it, 
media I would use dollar sign HTTP to return a prom to, to return a promise that would include that data and I would pass that data to my controller. Like you need to speak confidently and resolutely and and clearly about things. And I was like, wait, what? Because I was thinking I was being impressive by showing how thoughtful and that I could really consider my decisions. And <coughs> in the subsequent interviews, I feel I pr now this is just it's hard to grade, right? But I feel like people responded to me with more confidence than they had in previous interviews because I tried to speak clearly, resolutely, with confidence, and I would, but, and get the question right, right? Like, how do you make an HTTP request? You do this, right? And you guys are just getting into back end, back end, so you learn about like dot then and returning stuff and return, like, you know, returning promises. Um, if you haven't already. Um, so anyway, the point is, that was really helpful, and after that, th those are some personal interviewing tidbits that I learned that helped, that I feel helps me. And like, if nobody, if nobody has told you that yet, there you go. You'll, I think if you go, if you listen to a lot of other people, because you'll, you'll, like next week you have interviewing, right? An interviewing discussion next week, so good. You'll hear, you'll hear more and you should listen to them. But anyway, um, that's about it. Um, oh, another thing, so I actually told me that, um, Bobby, he, he, he was teaching, have you guys met Bobby? He, he was teaching, he was a previous student, he taught the evening, the last evening course, and I gave the same lecture last cohort, and uh, he <coughs> said, he's like, I would add, this is what Bobby said, like, do not be intimidated for jobs that you are underqualified for. So like, like and that's so hard to do, because like, it's, I think I personally find that emotionally difficult to not, because I'm afraid I'm gonna be laughed out when people see it or whatever. It's like, but Bobby said he would see things that said like mid-level, mid to, mid to senior, and he's like a super junior developer. And he would apply for these jobs that are like, and he would say like, and just as long as you acknowledge, and, and, and this is true, I have, I've, I have done this, and I got interviews for jobs where the the requirements were far outside of this thing, not were beyond my skills, right? But I would just say like, I do not, I, I recognize that I do not have the experience or the knowledge of all of the tools or frameworks that you use, but I am this, and I'm really interested in your company, this, 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 for this reason. And like, as long as you acknowledge and engage, like people are really forgiving because, and here's the thing, so I want to repeat that again. Do not be intimidated by job descriptions that appear to be far beyond your skill set. Like Bobby got a, a job that, as his first developer job, was a mid to, mid to senior level developer, right? And he, his thing, this is a beginning, right? Once you accept that we are all beginners here, this is not the end of your development education. You are going to learn, as soon as you get your first job, you're going to learn so much more. Because that's, what we, that's the life, right? That's how it works. But anyway, it's true, apply for jobs that if you don't, even if you don't feel qualified for them, um, the worst they can do is say no, and they ain't got nothing on you. So, big deal. Right? So. Also, too, on top of that, I have a graduate right now that's looking at, uh, I think recently applied to a PhD position, and they're looking for like a full-time job, and they want to know if they can get into the
start learning PHP, and you will have access, as you, as you do right now, to Coral Site and Linda um, and all those tools after you graduate. And so I was like, these are tons of resources where you can start learning PHP now. I would go through these so that you can tell them, like, I've already started learning it, that, uh, that shows your commitment. Um, and then also, too, he started looking through their website and actually found an error with some, with some of their code and experience that he was talking about. And so um, he was asking for advice about how to look more into that. Uh, and he's you know, planning on bringing that up to kind of show like, that he really cares about the product and the best thing that they're doing. Um, so those are some other things that you can do to kind of offset what you may not know, um, but showing that you really care about the company and want to be a part of the team. Because that's what they're looking for. Because just like you said, a lot of these teams, teams, they don't all know everything either. And they're always learning to teach each other. Um, and the industry, again, it's always, always changing. Now we're starting to get requests for React. And so we'll probably start teaching React. Yeah, React is, I'm, you probably heard me and Bob talk about React a lot. React is cool. React is, and it's, the, it's kind of the hip thing now too, but it is a paradigm shift from Angular, but it's super cool. Um, yeah. Just don't go out there. And that's just an example of like how technology is always changing. It's Holy like crap. Yeah. It moves so, you know, you know, it is yeah. overwhelming. Like, and that's the thing. That's the best part. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, like, I study, I read, I study in some way, shape, or form four out of seven nights out of the week. Two out of those nights, I'm watching Cheers with my wife. But, um, like, I always have to study us. I feel like, I'm, anyway, there's, you'll learn. It, it almost feels like, I mean, this is common now. I didn't realize it. Part of becoming a developer is the like there's like a, you have know, like fear of missing out. It's like fear of falling behind. It's like oh my goodness, there's this new thing. There's just like there's this other thing because you can't learn it all. Like and like you do, and it's not even. It's it's. You, I think you're good enough to be able to get good enough to be able to adapt at a, fa at a fairly quick pace. But anyway. Um, and that's what user groups are for too. Like people continue to learn and learn about these new technologies. And have you guys talked about going to like meetups and stuff? Here's the thing, everybody says go to meetups to meet people and get jobs. I can only speak from experience, nobody gets jobs at meetups. But it's a cool place to network and meet people. That's what you do get. You network and meet people. <coughs> and there's like some, there's some great Slack groups. There's Provo.js. Like people, you can get jobs in those networks. It's yeah. what we're saying. Totally. Um, and another thing about job listings, they are, they, are usually not written by developers. Like I'm guilty of this. At my old company, like I had, I understood at that point. I understood like programming logic fairly. I had a, I understood a little bit of programming logic. I could read like obje some Objective C and Swift and some C plus plus because there's a lot of familiar commonality and like basic flow and stuff. Anyway, I, and so I, I had to write job descriptions for some jobs that we were going to hire for developers, and I was like. I see this, this looks good, and this is good, but like, I didn't know what a lot of it was. Like, I, I didn't know. So, and that's what, and I thought it was really funny. This is a really interesting article um, called, Please Don't Learn to Code. It's pretty interesting. Um, it basically just says, um, you know, you just like, if you're not gonna, he, said, he just talks about the, the pros and cons of boot camps, really. And he's, I think he's pretty, pretty right on. Um, but he is really, I thought it was really funny. He's like, gatekeepers are everywhere. There's all these like HR managers, clueless HR managers who list prerequisites like five years of Swift programming language experience needed. Swift is only two years old. So the only people who have five years experience is the, the only guy is the guy who created it. Or no, there's, and the core team of Apple developers who, were put on to his project about five years ago. So Apple took it from one of their employees and made it so much better starting about five years ago, released it two years ago. So it's kind of bogus. And you'll see this jump all the time. And anyway, it's kind of funny. I've seen, have you guys seen that, that comic? It's like, uh, needs to have, you're looking for like a 20 to, 25-year-old employee who has 30 years of experience. Yeah. That was two years. 
afraid of my life looking for a job. Yeah. So. And anyway, um, that sucks, right? Yeah. However, um, like, if you're like, um, anyway, jobs are up. But the reason, the reason you can apply for mid to senior level jobs, senior is kind of too much. I, I don't need it. If it says like senior, personally, I just kind of leave it because a lot of times I see like, you'll be doing this. And I'm like, I know I'm not, I'm not a DevOps guy. I, dev, I was listening to my lead developer explain some of his issues today. I'm like, you could just pay more money and have, you know, get a different server, you know, whatever. But like, anyway, cause I don't know. Anyway, my point is, or no, I forgot my point, which probably means I'm done. Um, yeah, but there are, yeah, it's because there is, you are in demand. I saw this thing recently, like the most in demand jobs. You know what number one was? Registered nurses. Number two, software developers. And then it was like, number five was like some other developer. And number nine was web developer. Out of all careers, like it was like, it was software and app developers. I mean, I think there was, that's fine specifically desktop and mobile. And then web developer, web developer devoted was number nine. And there was something else in there too somewhere. It was like it was like software analyst. It was like number seven or whatever. So, um, and that was determined by job job numbers and the supply of professionals. So there are lots of jobs, and you can do it. Just do it. Do keep doing the everything that Soraya tells you to do. Listen to Bob. And is y'all's life hell right now? No, not, it's, I'm anticipating. It's not hell? No, it's Mine was. But I, I, I was the, I did the evening course. But I feel like I put in, I feel like I put in full-time hours. Soraya can validate that. Right? Well, until like 2, 2 a.m. every day. So, if you were doing the evenings, that's, you were doing interviews during the day? Yeah, so I would take, I would, uh, I would just step out and be like, hey, I have this block of time. Because they schedule it, right? Sometimes they call you out of the blue. But um, I just take it, like, hey, I gotta step out. And like, yeah, no big deal. Okay. Here, but I mean, okay. My, my point is that we're in class for like 10 hours a day. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, take, the, take the interview. Okay, okay. I don't know why I brought it. Just talk to Bob and he'll give you like a review for that day. Yeah. We'll talk about I mean, they don't take forever, right? But uh, actually, funny tidbit, like I had a few technical interviews and they were anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. Like most of them went up to about an hour. Um, the job I got, the technical interview was like almost four hours. It was like three, eight, three and three quarter, like three, it was over three and a half hours long. I was like, holy crap, is this not, is this, are, they, are we still talking? Like, is this going on still? But. Uh, Anyway, that's just me. I like talking about what I. But anyway, but keep studying and really like. Jobs are in demand, but be be the best. Thing. And you can do it. Anyway, any questions? Pizza is my favorite food. My mom's lasagna. Color is red and orange. How did remote interviews work? Well, they're pretty much, most all my interviews were remote. Okay. So they just do a folk. Here's the, here's the general process I found, is you generally have a, a phone screening. They call you and they say, they just do a few basic things and like it's basically repeat in everything that is on your resume. Like, oh, I did this. And um, <coughs> it's one lady told me, it's, like, it's basically just to make sure you're not completely making crap up. And then, and then you either get a, an initial in-person or a more in-depth phone interview with like, that's semi-technical. Um, and so you have basically a follow-up, which is actually your actual interview, right? And then after that, if they like you, then you get technical interviews. And then you might have a follow-up interview and then you get a job offer. So like, now, obviously, I can only speak from my experience. Yours will vary, absolutely be different, you know. Um, but in general, that was a pretty standard process. A screener, um, an initial interview that was online or in person. Online, we just used 
they sent me a link either like Google Hangouts or we've been on Skype sometimes or they used Zoom and they just sent me a link and I just logged in. Um, the remote was never a problem. I mean, we're, we work in the web industry. Online was okay. Um, and then technical interviews. Any other questions? <coughs> Janitor, that was my first job. No questions? Okay, no. I think it's really pretty simple. Like, I think all you really need to know is like, and here's the thing, I, yeah, how to apply for lots of jobs. Apply for lots of jobs, that's what I can provide. There we go. Yeah. Can you give us some bullet points for that cover letter thing that you just have saved in your email? Do you want my, the previous ones that I did? That would be really awesome, but Thank bullet you. points were too. I don't really have any bullet points. Okay. I just wrote, because, I, I've read different things that cover letters are, some people say cover letter, I've read HR professionals write opinions that are completely conflicting. Yep. Some say, cover, if you don't have a cover letter, I'm not gonna look at you. Some people like, cover letters are dumb and nobody ever reads it. So I just write, basically what I write in mine, I say, um, I say, Here's what like, hi, my name is this. I'm just, I'm interested in this. Um, here's what I am, what I use in my background. Um, I express kind of my hopes and aspirations related to the job, like, you know, meaning like, um, I, I hope I get the job. <laughs> um, and, and you know, I never know, how, the hardest part for me is always like knowing how to end. And I, and I found, I saw one of them, I was like, it's, it's, thanks for your consideration. And I love that. Um, I, oh, I didn't write it on this one. But I, I'll, I just say, thanks for your consideration, exclamation mark. So, that's <coughs> I feel like that was like the most, the easiest way to get out of the, to end the cover letter. Um, and yeah. And I just tried to like, did anybody work like around code before? See, I guess like that was one, what, like that was one thing I had. I just tried to take whatever experience I had and <coughs> make it sound like I can show you my original one if you want. So like, and I edited it continually. I think there's a bunch of spelling errors. Basic application speech me basic application message. So like, here's what I wrote initially. Hi, I'm interested in your web app developer position. I am a web app developer in computation. My background is in computational linguistics. So like, I have experience with Python, Objective-C, and Swift, but most of my experience is with Java, um, Comma, AngularJS, and the full mean stack. I am also eager to learn new languages and frameworks. I'm currently the lead in research and development at Complete Speech, and I continue to code, to contribute to code bases um, however, I am seeking a full-time position, dual position. Oh, and later I said, you know, I, um, basically I said like, I, want, <coughs> I work around code, but I want to code, I want to develop full-time and not just work around it, whatever. So that was, what I, that was my, basically just find something that is true, but that just makes it look like you've been working, you've been involved, I don't know, whatever. I don't know what you do. Soraya will help you with that. Yeah, just do basic cover letter. But here's the thing, you can apply for tons of jobs this way. And you'll get automated, you'll get emails, and you don't have to look. You can just, they will, they will send it to you. And that's it. Well, actually, we have a workshop on cover letters on the 29th. So, good. Because I don't know, I might come to that. Previously with Indeed, they would say that they were new jobs, but they were old jobs, and they kept sending them. That's true. How did you remember which you'd apply to? Which good point. Yeah. To? Let's okay. Let's. That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Okay. Apply now. So let's say like, hey, I opened this email. If you log into your account, it says, hey, I already applied for this. Applied. Um. So Indeed makes it so. In the email, they will send you repeat jobs. Actually, that's they all they do on a regular basis. Um, they'll send the same job over and over and over. 
Um, but if you use, if you apply, if, as long as you log in, right? If you have an account, it keeps track of where you've applied. And that's kind of funny. Sometimes I'll see like, oh, that sounds like a good one. Like, oh, I already applied for it like two weeks ago. They never contacted me. Lame. But um, it does. And, and here's the thing: dice, it, indeed. And you'll see. And you'll see. You you'll start to see the same job listed in multiple places. You might see like the same job listed on like Indeed, Monster, and Dice. And Dice is cool. Dice is, does the same thing. Let's say like JavaScript. Oh, come on. And at Atlanta, Georgia. Like you'll see a lot of the same thing. I have to log in. Let's just look for one. I don't know if, yeah, easy, easy apply. So like full stack developer, Smyrna, Georgia. I want to apply for this. This sounds like a three years JavaScript development. Oh, this is, wait, is this Java? <coughs> what is JavaScript? Preferred skills Java, JBoss, mobile frameworks, whatever. I want to apply just because I want to. Um, oops. So it tries to like, and so you can save. <coughs> Here's my computational linguist. linguist. I want to upload a new one. Open. I'll do proposal cover cover letter. I see. Like, look, so I made a suggestion for something me to do. So I'm not really serious about this one, but it's I'm remotely interested. So whatever you do. I've done this before. <laughs> Let me just submit it. I'm like, ah! <laughs> but I'm like, but usually, like, but uh, um, so yeah. But I mean, if you put it in templates, maybe they'd be like, hey, this guy knows something. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. As, as manager, the biggest thing I get uh, applications or resumes rather than like the fillable resumes. Like, I came here, yeah. do this there. They had to fill it out. <laughs> really? <laughs> so look, I'm gonna find this job. Boom! No filling out pages. Like some some things. Like what we've been talking for like 50 minutes. Like there have been there are some applications where like I might be done filling out that one. Maybe now. Like the IBM one. Like some of these are just like, good night. Like because they make you write out. Like like some. I applied for one job. I've I worked for. Them. The government and military before, so like I had to fill out <coughs> everything related to everything I did with the government and military, right? And like, and it takes like a year to do, but uh, um, but like, and and if you if you want a job that requires that, then like you have to bow and respect their. Uh, oh, by the way, Code Academy just released a SAS course. Do you have a SAS? It's pretty cool. SAS is a uh, there's two. There's actually, there's S CSS and there's SAS. Um, oh yeah, here we go. SAS difference. They're actually pretty similar. Um, they are. Oh, I think Ruby that is almost. Anyway, it's um. You can create like variables for your CSS. It's pretty cool. You can say like. Uh, uh, you can just check it out. I, I use it at work. I use it at work, but I didn't actually create it. I use somebody else already created all of our our SAS system. So instead of using like background color this, you're just like, oh, this is gonna be a style, everything that way. Like a, a combination of styles that you can put together. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And Code Academy rocks, so we should I wanna go check it out. Um, anyway, I hope I hope this is helpful. I wish somebody would have showed this to me. Like I'm really happy that I figured it out. And and obviously, there are pros and cons to this. Like, the the con is if everybody in the if every developer, if every junior developer knows like, I can apply for every job, east coast to west coast. Then like, there's you know there's gonna be flooding. So and, and that's that's gonna happen anyway. Um, the job I got, there were like over 100 applications for it, but uh, which is ironic, 
and, and people people way more qualified than me apply. So and, and it's cool. Like they look for a fit. Yeah, anyway. It's true. I, I also, I've also been told. I mean, I might not, my job is not a developer, but I was chosen over someone who was more qualified just because they felt like I was a better fit for the team. Yeah. So keep that in mind. It's not just your skills. It's your passion and your fit and your attitude. And uh, if it if it I feel like I'm stating the obvious, and I feel like you're all probably smart enough to know this, but like, I'm, I am, I, I try to be very humble at work, and like, I don't try, I don't pretend like I'm anything great. Like I, I'm always learning, and if, if you are patient, and if you're a good worker and a good team member, people will be good team members to you. That's more like just career, be a good, be a good team member. Because I've never, this is my first developer job. I've never been, I've been lots of things, but I've never been a developer. So anyway, I can only speak from experience. You guys might have night and day different experiences for me. But anyway, um, any other questions? No? Okay, cool. Uh, sweet. Thank you. Uh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Guys. Oh. You did have a crush. Thank you. <laughs>